What up, what up, people? Howdy, 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 do. This is day 207, Make It Songbringer, and today I'm going to be working on the story system a little bit more. Let me show you what um, the story turned out from, like from yesterday. So I worked on the dialogue a bit last night, dialed it in to the point where I was proud enough to share a, a GIF on Twitter. I'm like, yeah, this looks good. So I love the way the dialogue's popping up now and all that. So I just started working on um, flags and things that will, will trigger dialogue correctly. So there's what the dialogue looks like now. See, now I need to work on that. That's, that's that thing you said there at the end, like the ag. That was supposed to be Waterfall 2. So Waterfall 2 is something which triggers if you're near the waterfall and you haven't already done waterfall one. So I need to process these has things and I'm gonna go ahead and start that right now. So um, I've created a class in world which um, is called a matcher and this thing can already parses things for foes. So I already had this list of foes like right so each one of these foe types had certain criteria which would match it to a certain area. Like blobs one, for example, has to be Z zero, which is the overworld. And it has to be a difficulty of zero, between zero and 0 0.5. And if that matches, and it randomly chooses amongst some other things that would also match, and it, so it does end up choosing this, then it puts a blob or a, between three and 33 blobs and between one and three blob twos. So that's kind of how that system works. And the story system is going to work in a similar way. So I had to go and like, for example, it matches flags. It can also match um, styles. So if we wanted like um, styles for like mountain, for example, the player says something only if you're in the mountains, that could be one of the things that matches. What's up, Canada? I'm just, I'm greeting all of Canada right now. What's up? <laughs> Yo. Um, yeah, so that, um, yeah, that's what I'm going to do. Start processing these has variables. So what I, what I did was um, I made this class which can match those things, right? And then I'm subclassing it in two different areas. One for the foes and two for the story. So that's great. I can reuse this code for the basic styles and flags and Z matching and all that. So in system, I'm going to go and start off the, the ability for story node. Story node is the other type of matcher. Um, I already got a, a data structure for has. Now I just want to parse the has elements. So has is going to be two things. There's has and has not. <clears throat> yes. <laughs> oh, dude. That's so awesome. I've never seen that one before. Whoops. Oh, man. I don't know how to, I don't know how to do these. What's up, Azarus? Aren't you supposed to do the... Did you just type BC Warrior? Oh, that's it. Yay. Oh, I'm so glad. <laughs> this is my favorite one so far. Oh, man. All right. So, yeah. Um, yeah, so let's do this. Let's parse the has. So we'll create a string to, to, to store stuff. So stir equals siblings. We need to get the siblings. So auto ref siblings equals leaf dot get first child <laughs> yeah so and then we want to do siblings dot get get sibling has Yeah, what's up, Amir? Yeah, I'm trying to do really early today because I got some stuff Saturday stuff I want to do tonight. I'm actually gonna make a new frame 
for a canvas and do some other like just man stuff tonight. What's up, Arcane? Howdy, guys. Um, let me show you um, the, how the dialogue turned out last night, and then I'll keep on parsing these nodes and stuff for the story. So the story system is working pretty well now. It's got it can match flags and it can match um, styles and it can match the Z too. So far, now I'm gonna start matching the has thing. The has is gonna be whether you've already done a certain story node, and it can also match your items. So you notice on this screen, he's not triggering any dialogue. And if I go over to this other screen over here, once I get to the middle, we'll sort of towards the middle, it triggers his dialogue. So it's triggering his dialogue because it has the flag waterfall. Yes, exactly. Man stuff tonight. Uh-huh. That's right. I'm going to have a power drill, screws, wood, jigsaw. It's going to be great. All right, so we got to keep on parsing the has. Uh, all right, so has is going to be separated by commas. Yeah, I guess we'll call it words. Oh, this is um get sibling has that get stir. Then split up the words constring s um stir delim comma elements words. Now loop over the words. <laughs> yeah. Oh man. If only I was. <laughs> oh man, my favorite one. I'm gonna do that all the time now. So for each word, we're gonna parse out the has. So it could be an item. Let's do an item. First, we'll check if it's an item. So that's going to be gear component. Get item type, I think, for key. Yeah, this is it, word. So if this comes out to be um, <laughs> Um, this actually might need to be put into separate, yeah. Has already, hasn't already. Has. As in, there. Uh, maybe this should actually be broken into item type and quantity. So I really should be actually just writing this, this data first. Right, so I'm thinking like something like this, like let, let's see. Um, when it first plays the music for the for when you after you get the sword and you come up after the out of the cave, you play some music, right? So mm, so if your Z is zero um, and you have the sword.
play this music, which is, um, what track is that? The name of this track is, Overworld A. Yeah, this is it. Yeah, Overworld A. Tiny P3. Yeah, and then it'll save the fact that it's played this music and it'll never play it again. That's the point. Okay. So it'll be something like that. And. I guess we could make this even more powerful, right? So eventually we I could do has sword equals one. This is implied here. That means has sword just means that it's you have any quantity of the sword item. Um, but you could specify you could even say has sword equals zero. That would be the equivalent of hasn't. Or you can go not sword. I think I'm just gonna keep it as knots for now. Knots and so any or none. Alright, so first thing we need to do is um, parse the not. So if the first letter of the word L, if this doesn't have any letters, we should just not even do this. So Oh, you can't use not. That's right. It's a new reserve word. It's not new. Oh, I just found this out. So as in I don't know if you um if you knew this, but um I tested it out on Visual Studio, and um you can't use and or or. So like you know how in Visual in Xcode you can do like if one and two. So you can use and and or and all that logically. Um, that's actually been part of the C++ standard since 1998. I just found that out. And then so Visual Studio has never implemented it because they thought that people wouldn't use it. So anyways, if you need, if you want to actually use AND and OR on Visual Studio, you've got to include C ISO 646. And you can include that safely on Mac as well. So this is kind of, a, I think this is a cross-platform thing. And so that enables you using and and or and all that. So that's nice to know. But I think I'm just going to stick with using the and and or the and the you know the old school and and or. So we'll say bool negate equals false. Uh, no, it's not bitwise. What's up, SCV? Yeah, so those things are like, um, you can do bit or. So like, if one bit or two, that would be bitwise, right? And then this, and this is actually logical. Right? So yeah, there's a whole host of these kind of things. I forget what they call them, but yeah, they've actually been part of C++ since 1998. Crazy. Uh huh. So negates false if the first word or first letter is a not. So we might as well make this auto word so it gives us a copy of that word and we can modify it. Word. Negate equals true and word equals word dot substr one. Cool. All right. So, yeah, we got the negate. So, if the item type Yeah, I know, right? 
I know. I would have used them. I would have used them if Visual Studio was on board, but I had to do this crazy janky stuff by including C ISO 646, which is not actually putting it part of your keywords. It's actually just implementing some some macros or whatever. And I'm like, you know what? I don't know if I want to do that either. I'd rather. I think I'd just rather just stick with the old school. So. If negate hasn't pushed back item else has the pushback item so otherwise it's the story node key what's up PMC Welcome, welcome, welcome. Welcome to the stream. Today's the second day working on the story system here. And I'm parsing out some information to use for the story. So I can do things like this. Like if the if the player is at the Z position of zero, which is the overworld, and they have the sword, and implied in every single one of these things is that you haven't already done this key already then play the overworld music. So it plays the overworld music, sets the key so it remembers that it's never gonna play it again, and boom, it goes on. Same thing with waterfall one and two. These are dependent on you not already having waterfall two. For, for example, one depends on you not already playing two, and two depends on one. <laughs> right? Exactly. You want the magic? I'm going to have to stick with my old ampersand, ampersand. So this is a story node key. It's not an item. So we got if negate has already, no, hasn't already dot push back the key, which is Oh, we already got this thing's key parsed. That's a member variable. Has uh, has already pushed back key. Okay, let's see if this works. Um, first of all, let's see if it parses. So we'll just set a breakpoint here. Check on this, these values, make sure to parse those correctly as expected. Okay, so this is um, a static variable. Oh, I don't need this breakpoint here. All right, cool. Um, let's see, where is it? Where is it? Story, story nodes. First story node, this thing should have has in it. Yeah, cool, we got has a size one. Has the nano sword, perfect. Cool. Okay, the next one should have in its has not already. Good, we haven't already done waterfall one. Beautiful. Okay, cool. It's nice to just verify that. It's not fully verified, you could say, but mostly I'm pretty pretty certain that that's gonna parse correctly. So, um, yeah, let's start, let's start matching these now. Now that we've got those things done, we can match them. So, Z style flags, let's match. So if we had an, if it's an item, then um, if has or node.has.size is greater than zero. 
and uh, I guess we have to loop through every one of the hazes. So has has means that we have to have this item. So we need to loop through all of the player's items. So we need the gear, the player's gear component. Cool. All right, we got the gear component, and now we just loop through. The uh, gear dot has. Oh, and this is a pair. All right, now if we're requiring, oh, uh, we also have to loop through the. Hmm, this is going to be a little bit more of a loop. Because I don't want to modify gear. I need to use find. What's up, Brunsbear? So we need to loop over every... Every one of these items in the node.has. And we need to search the gear.has for that item. So if we found the item and its quantity is less than or equal to zero, right? First is atom type, second is the quantity. So if its second is less than or equal to zero, then we failed. So that would be a continue, but Let's do a little, um, I'm going to do a lambda function for this. So I can turn this into a simpler loop. Or actually, maybe I'll do a gear component method. Yeah, that's a, probably a better idea. Gear component method. So I can reuse this later. Gear component. Nice. Interesting. Uh, yeah, I think it would be cool. However, I think it would change the game play, the game design radically. So think about it a little bit. You Maybe you want that. Maybe you want to change the game play radically. Maybe you don't. I don't know. What's up, Alex Pita? Welcome, welcome, welcome. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Oh, there, it's already got count item type. All right, sweet. We don't need to even do this method. Count item type. If you, Yeah, here we go. If we has not equal to end, return it second. That's all we wanted to do. This is a non, this doesn't actually modify the array, so we can totally simplify this. If gear dot count this item type oh boo
once again, if I were to go continue, this would continue that loop. Uh, I was hoping to get away without any bracket or braces on this one, but. Maybe I can break this into a lambda function so I don't have to do that it's so ugly. I think so. I can think of I can make a method called has, and that will I could negate. But would it work for the other one too? Hmm. Sweet. It's cool. That's a really cool um cool idea. Yes. <laughs> yeah, this will only work for items. Uh, no, I'm not necessarily quests. I guess this could be quests. Yeah, this could be used for quests eventually, but what I'm building is a story system. So let me show you how the, the story turned out from last night. Um, so I got the dialogues looking better. And the system works now, so I can go to... Um, right? It only plays this dialogue when he's on this screen. So there, there's one little bit of dialogue, and now I'm working on making it so these other little bits of hases and hasn'ts and nots and things like that work so that we so that dialogue is even more I can dial in exactly what plays when and what doesn't. I guess this could be used for quests. Yeah.
Yeah, totally right. It's definitely added a fun element to the game, which it was, you never, it's like, you never really know when your game's missing something until you implement it and you do it. And then you realize, whoa, I can't believe I, the game never had that. You know, this is one of those things. Um, I'm thinking, I was thinking there was more along the lines of an overall storyline that you're, that you go through and it changes each, each, a little bit each time you play it. So each time you play the game, you're going to get parts of the story, you know, so you're never going to get the whole story because of certain items being in certain things and that causes certain dialogue to play. So, um, I wasn't particularly planning on quests or it being that would that's that's kind of implies it's more of like a roguelike game. This is more of like a Zelda like game where it's a little bit different in its style. So I'm I'm not sure if there's gonna be quests or not, but maybe there can there can be like sub quests, you know, for example, like maybe there's some sub quest which triggers um you get that triggers you along some sort of storyline path depending on the world you're in. Like maybe there's a sub quest A and then there's also sub quest B or C or whatever. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, there is. So that's what this is gonna do here with this. So these this is waterfall one, and this is waterfall two. These have an these are gonna have an equal chance of playing. So the the game is gonna have to do a random roll to see which one it does. And once it's done one of them, it's not gonna ever do the other. See how waterfall two has the not waterfall one, and waterfall one has the not waterfall two. So if one of them is played, it'll never play the other. So that's how it. That's how you can have multiple different possibilities for talking, you know, all these types of things. Are you talking about options? Ah. Oh yeah, interesting. Uh huh. Um, one of the ideas that was was put up forth yesterday was to have um, so there's this item you can find called the babble fish so you can actually understand what Jib's saying. So right now he talks and he's always in his um, his you know he talks in the alien font, which you can't understand by default as a player, but the hero, the hero always understands. Rock understands what Jib's saying, right? But we don't as as the viewers of this game. But there might be an item you can find in the world which allows you to always understand Jib so he talks in English or whatever language you're in or whatever. And then, yeah, and then Vlad also mentioned he, that you could have a puzzle or quest based on the solution tie, tying to Jib telling you what to do, which would be exactly like what you just said. Um, obtaining secrets or information or item, maybe even items from Jib and his knowledge. Oh, sweet. Turticus, Burgicus. Welcome to the stream, man, and thanks for reading the fact. Oh, this is so great. Yeah, high five, dude. You read the fact. Oh, man, you're a rare individual. So sweet. Man, I wish there were more people like you. Turticus, Burgicus, all the way. Yeah, totally. Fat guy, yes, this is a one-man project. I make the, I'll do all the code. I make all the art in Photoshop. I make the music in Ableton. Huh? All right, so let's keep on processing these has functions. So count equals gear dot count. If negate and count is greater than zero, return false. Else if not negate and count is less than or equal to zero, return false. Otherwise, return true. So now we can reuse this method and use it for the has and hasn'ts. We don't need to do this whole if success and all that. So if 
let's call this has item make it a little more specific so has item we need to pass in this thing's node.has and we need to look for the item type oh we don't even need to pass in the item type we just need to pass in negate so negate is going to be false for this particular thing here and then we'll go continue all right there now it's nice and simple and clean uh, in general I try to avoid while loops fat guy because they could possibly be infinite I know that's kind of irrational because for loops can potentially be infinite too but I prefer to use a for loop which has an end and a start <laughs> we haven't made it huge enough. Uh, cool. So now we've got this. We can do hasn't as well. So if no dot hasn't dot size and has item no dot hasn't negate true. Okay. So this is going to require some testing to make sure this is working, but. Now let's do the has, um, not, exalt, not, not the has item, but let's do the has uh, node key already. True, man, true. Well, you know my reasoning for what I use. So let's do a has key I guess you could call this a has key so we need to we don't need gear but we need do we need a vector of strings I think yeah vector string what's up shiny uh, this is C++ man Okay, we got bool negate. All right, now we need to go um, for each. This is going to be for each string in the vector. If negate, and we already have, so we need to we need to capture this thing's this or yeah, this. Yep, yep. Why isn't it like that? Oh, because this is not, this is, there is no this. So we need to capture story data for this. Doesn't like that either? Come on, let me do it. Doesn't have automatic storage duration. What about that? Nope. Hmm, why can't I get story data? Doesn't have automatic storage duration. What's that supposed to mean? Well, I guess we could just pass in the story data. So we'll do, we'll pass in a const story system uh, map type. So for each string in the vector, if negate and I guess we'll we'll do a non-destructive accessing of this data. So or non, it is not going to modify this data at all. So it equals data dot find. We're looking for s. Um, so and then count equals it second and if it 
equals data dot end continue this loop so if negate and count is greater than zero same thing as all that other stuff up there return false cool okay so now we got two little lambda functions to use for to make these these loops more simple it's gonna be very similar to that. So match has hasn't key. I just realized this has already and hasn't already is kind of a bogus name. So we'll, these should be called has key and hasn't key. And then here, we'll do the same kind of thing. Uh, no, it doesn't. No. Not to my knowledge. If that's if that's the truth, then man, that's that would totally change my whole perspective on everything. Can anyone confirm this? I would love to know. Yeah, autoref, no. Autoref does not. I'm pretty sure. What's up, Vanguard? So next we'll match the key. If no dot has key dot size and has key no dot has key story data and then hasn't key and has key no dot hasn't key story data cool all right this should be the initial system let's see if this works I don't know. I, I really doubt this. What's up, Bukeki Top Petrushkin? Hello, man. Hey, since it's the first time you're posting here, uh, I mean, feel free to go ahead and post your link. Uh, Hengad, yeah, well, I'm actually streaming quite early. I'm streamed a whole two hours earlier than I usually do, so this is about the earliest it's ever going to get. Sorry, man. Yeah, so, but where does this, where does this say that, I know what top, type inference is, but where, where does it say that, um, what is it, what you said? Doesn't the auto ref already continue on data dot end? This is the one we were talking about right here. Auto it equals data dot find s if yeah we're I don't know I'm not even using this is auto not auto ref anyways but this is just creating an iterator so no there's I don't think that auto if I already do there's no continue anyways. I don't I can't see how this would ever continue. Like if I were to comment this out, this is completely necessary in my opinion. These two lines. But if somebody could prove me wrong, please let me know that. What's up Chaos Gaming? Right, right. Yeah, there's begin and end functions, of course. It's cuz it's an iterator. Programmer can also Yeah, yeah, I'm already using that Yeah <clears throat> uh, 
Oh yeah. Nice man, how long did it take you to make this? Can I show my game loop? I don't have a game loop. Well, I guess I do have a game loop. It's just like this, man. Are you talking about, uh, is this what we were talking about early, like the other day about um, fixing your time step? This is my my time step and everything. It uses an accumulator. So it gets the, the, the amount of time it's run since last time it called the tick update, right? Restores that last update time. So basically it, get, it gets itself a frame time. And then, but this is the key, this is the magic right here. Accumulator plus equals frame time. That's the magic, accumulator. And then this is the, the other magic right here. It ticks only if the accumulator is greater than the number of seconds per tick, and then it ticks down, or it subtracts the accumulator out there, and increases the tick count. So this is how you write a fixed time step game loop, right? And then after you do the fixed time step for the ticking, you also want to do your animate methods separate from your tick methods so that um, if you ever wanted to reverse time like the game braid does for example if you want to reverse time something you're going to still need to animate right but you want to tick differently so you really want to separate your ticks from your animations i wish i was trying to capture it but it wouldn't let me yeah you're welcome man yeah, I was trying to capture that variable, but some it just wouldn't let me capture it. So let's see, let's see if this works. What's up, Fair Logics? Welcome to the stream today. I'm working on the story system. This is part two of the story system. Now I'm getting into the story system, so it's really oh, without the capture, maybe. Oh yeah, probably right. But it's a it is a static variable of the class story system. So this time it should run the, the dialogue. Oh, see now it's not even running the dialogue at all. So something, click something went wrong. Okay, let's figure it out. Thread the main loop? Nah, I think that's a bad idea myself. Uh, it's an interesting idea, right? It, but it adds a lot of complexity to your whole game and I don't think it's wise at all. Personally, I've done multiplayer before and, um, or I mean, multi threaded, and it just really introduced so much complexity that you don't need. You don't even need it, man. Already, this I'm using the game engine called Coco Studio X, which already separates my main, my game's main loop from the renderer. So the renderer is in a separate thread, the sound is in its own thread, and the game, the main game loop is in its own thread. So there's really no need. Oh, it's oh, you're Gladiar. Oh, what's up, man? Yeah, multiplayer just takes so much time. Oh my god. Okay, so let's figure out why this isn't working. First, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna add a little bit of check here. So if the game's uptime. like less than three and then I can set a breakpoint here and start figuring this out um, let's try that if I didn't capture this oh yeah you're right Azenris it looks like it doesn't even need that capture. Cool. Duh. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thanks for catching my craziness. Sometimes I don't realize the basics. 
Okay, so yeah, I can get rid of this. You don't need to pass that in every time. Okay. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna step through these and figure out why this has and hasn't isn't working. It's probably just a, some faulty logic. What's up, Brunsbear? It's about half that. Half that vertically. Same thing as Nintendo. Nintendo is about 256 pixels tall. And this is the same, close to the same res. Okay, so let's check out what story nodes we have. Let's see how that parsed out and make sure those came out right. So this is the second story node here. Should have a key, or hasn't key. Yeah, if it hasn't the key, waterfall one. Good, that's all we need. Um, and this first one here, let's just see what happens. Has Z range. Cool, it passed the Z range check, that's correct. Because a world matcher Z range has Z range true, X, zero, Y, zero. So yeah, that matches the Z of the overworld. Now the flags, doesn't matter, has. Oh, I think all these are supposed to be not has item. To start with, let's try that again. Faulty logic. Faulty logic got me again. Got me by the tail. I'm trying to run away. My feet are furious. So right here, it should trigger that. And it should, it should successfully trigger this playing the music, but we haven't hooked up the playing of the music actually yet. So, but let's see if it actually gets through this loop on this first one. So it should still succeed with the Z range. Styles doesn't matter, flags doesn't matter, but has does. So let's go into this has item loop. Vector V should have one item inside it. Looks like we can't really easily inspect it though. So we'll just go in there, I. Okay, Adam Nanosword, perfect. We got what we wanted. Um, we've, we've captured gear. Um, the count of gear should be one. We should have one sword. Cool, we have a sword. Now, if negate, negate is false, right? So it's not even gonna try this one. Else, if not negate and count is less than or equal to zero, return false, that's correct. And then it returns true. So it has the item. And if it doesn't have the item, then it continues. Perfect. Okay, yeah, so it would have done this dialogue, or this item. Um, now we need to, we need to parse, parse out actions to be able to actually get that music to play, because there's no dialogue. See, T comes out to be zero. There's no dialogue entity that can run for this whole thing. But it is triggering that it's actually played this story data node key. Okay, so that should, it should work. Let's see what happens now. I'm going to run the game and it should play Waterfall 1's dialogue, but not Waterfall 2's. Yeah. Cool. So it's playing Waterfall Dialogue 1. Oh, damn it. It played Waterfall 2. Okay, let's figure out what's up with that then. Um, instead of, let's get rid of this whole tick update thing. So I'll set a breakpoint here.
Oh, we might not even need to pass in the negate. Yeah, wow, we don't even need those. I don't think. Let me just verify though. So I need to set a breakpoint here. If O dot key equals waterfall two and story data waterfall one. I'm pretty sure I did capture gear by, oh, capture it by ref. Oh man, does that do that? So if, I, oh, you're right. Oh, Azenray's good call. Oh man. Can I capture by a const ref? That's what I would prefer. No? So I just capture by ref? Yeah, that's way better. Good call. Thank you, Azenris, once again. Yeah, that's totally totally important. I forgot I forgot that Lambda captures copy by default. So it's not a huge data structure, but I do. Yeah, I do want that passed by by reference for sure. <laughs> I like this one. I'm adding that to the ideas list. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I don't even need any of this negation. That's going to really simplify both those lambdas. Um, So I'll set a breakpoint here when it's about to trigger this waterfall too. Just to verify that it, what the hell is, I'm gonna figure out what's going wrong with this loop right now. I think I would need to turn off the not for the hasn'ts. I'll just get rid of the negate just to start with. All right, so we're here. It's able to run this waterfall too. Well, it shouldn't be able to, but it it thinks that, you know, that's a possibility. So it's not has key, it's hasn't key that we need to check now. Hey, what's up, fun? What up, man? This is a cool one too. I'm learning. All right, so hasn't key. Let's check this out. Step in the vector. I think once again, this is gonna be a, something we can't really read. So, okay, we got the first key, S. It's not letting me read it. Damn you, Lambda. Okay, so it found that iterator in the story data. How many counts does that have? Zero. For which key? I can't even tell what key it's getting. Oh, it sucks. <laughs> it's true, <laughs> it's true. I only know one emote on Twitch, but it's my favorite one ever. None of these. I can't tell what any what this string is. So 
So lame. All right. You know, I'm just gonna go with my instinct. I'm pretty sure that I don't need any of these negates. Right. All right, and then these I just do has item. So if you don't have the item, and here if you have the item, here if you don't have the key, and here if you have the key, and my breakpoints are off. So let's see if it works. Of course, this means if it doesn't work, I gotta just do the same thing again. But let's see. Come on, come on. No whammies, no whammies. Yeah, oh yeah, oh, uh, finally I'm teaching Azenris something. Yeah, dude, it's a, um, it's a, it's an actual string literal. It construct, it constructs an actual, it doesn't even have to construct the string. The string is constructed by the compiler. So instead of it being a C string literal, it's actually a, a C++ string literal. So faster and all that. All right, good night. Good night, Bruns Bear. And that does work on Visual Studio too. I checked that and I checked the and ors. And so yeah, that works. Oh man. Still, it still failed. <sighs> well. All right. Yeah, C plus plus fourteen. Um, yes, you can all you can pretty much use those because I know Visual Studio twenty fifteen supports it and Xcode supports them. There's C plus plus fourteen standard. So as long as your compiler or whatever and all the game and all the game platforms you're going for support. Yes, yeah, that creates the standard string without having to create construct it using a C string. Actually, that would be more accurate. That would be faster for me to do that too. Nice, Devil Robot. Cheers, man. I'm glad you like it. That was totally your guys' suggestions. Um, I forget who suggested it. It might have been Momir. I don't know. It said you should put a rock in there to give it some depth. Okay, so we're here at Waterfall 2. And this probably means I'm not going to be able to understand it. We need to check this hasn't key. This should be returning. Hmm. First of all, let's look up node hasn't key. Good, yeah, there's one item in here, and it's, and it's Waterfall 2. Wait a minute.
That's wrong. Oh, uh, maybe that's why the whole system's been wrong. That this whole thing's been wrong the whole time. <laughs> nice. Uh, no, I don't know. Yeah, I don't think I, I yeah, I don't think there's a W version, but there you just would use a um You would have to use a W car T string and it would automatically do it with S. You see this Turtus Turticus? Yeah, so you can you've got the W string version here. You just have to pass in the right C string. Lucas PG, what's up, man? That's so cool. I'm so excited for you that you're new to game development. You're so young. Um, any advice? Yes, I have. I have two main pieces of advice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So two pe two main pieces of advice. Pay attention here. First of all, go check out extra credits. Let me give you this link. There's some great, great videos that kind of explain everything that I would explain to you anyways. So yeah, if you see, they've got tons of these videos on how to start game development, basics, practical rules, setting and keeping goals, minimum viable product, scope small, start right. This is an incredibly important one launching your game, marketing your game, all these things. Check out every single one of these videos and not not all at once, right? Maybe check out a video or two every day of, of your game development learning process. So um, check all those out. I even experienced game developers can go and watch those videos and learn stuff from those. And the second thing is do this. This kind of sums up so many years of life lessons that I could possibly share with you. I've been a game developer for over 20 years, and this is probably the most important thing I can share with you. I can go on and on and on, and in fact, I'm probably going to write um, a blog post just about this and why it's so beneficial. First of all, it, it help, I'll give you a couple reasons. First of all, it helps you stick with things because a lot of people don't stick with game development or they don't finish the games they start. Um, a lot of that's because they scope things too big, but I think a lot of it is they, that people don't, that people aren't following their hearts as, as, as truly as they should be. Because you're, so it's like this, like, maybe you really would prefer to make the dopest game ever, but then you get realistic and go, oh, you know, I'd love to make that kind of game, but I really need to go make money. So you go and you get a job doing web development and then you make your game in your in your spare time or whatever. And for some people that is their path and that is the right path for them. But for some people who really, really do want to make that game, truly, that's not the right path. You're shooting just to the side of your goal. You're going to miss your target. So if you follow your heart and if you're true to your heart, if you actually follow it truly, you will... First of all, you'll get places more rapidly. You'll actually get to do things. Secondly, you'll be more excited about what you're doing. Thirdly, you'll finish the things you started. Um, and fourth, it'll be fun the entire time. Like there's so many different things that are that are beneficial about that. So I hope you were listening there. <laughs> Have fun and run far, far away. <laughs> uh Wait a minute, this is wrong. Waterfall 2. Oh, what? Hmm. So when I got in here, node.key equals waterfall 2. Node.hasn't. Let's see this one more time. Wait a minute, what? Is it parsing it wrong? 
Yeah, yeah, we might as well just stop when it parses. Look at the data before it does anything else. So let's start. Let's start a breakpoint right at our beginning. Nice. Yeah, thanks, man. Cheers. Yeah, true, true. And this is what I'm talking about about your reality too. Sometimes your reality has to you have to keep moving with your realities that you're within the confines of the abilities and the beliefs that you have in your own reality at first, you know. You can't just jump off a cliff with everything. But once you you can you can steadily move your life more and more towards truly following your heart, you know. Um Okay, so this should have parsed the story nodes. Here we go. The, the second story node should have hasn't key. Ah, it's wrong. That should be waterfall one. So somehow it went wrong when it was parsing. Okay, well, good. We've identified the problem. This one also has the wrong key. Oh, you know what? I think I know what it is. I probably just totally saved them wrong. Yeah, this is it. This shouldn't be key. This should be word. Okay, now let's keep with this breakpoint. We'll check what it read this time. All right, all right. Story notes. Has, hasn't, second one should have not, oh, hasn't key. Waterfall one, yeah! This one's waterfall two, perfect. Okay, this should work now. So if I walk over to this screen, it triggers the flag for waterfall. If I go here closer to the center, it's gonna trigger the first one. And then it should not play the second waterfall dialogue. Yes. Oh, awesome. Same thing if I walk off the screen, come back. It should not ever play waterfall two. Good. Okay, it works. All right. So the next thing I want to do is be able to randomize between the two types of um, things there. What's up, Panda Man 3D? <laughs> I love I love the I love all the emotes. I gotta do I gotta do the one emote I know. Yes. <laughs> All right, so here's the thing. This story has two different waterfall things that could possibly trigger. Now we need to be able to randomize, right? If there are, if there's more than one thing which can run, then we need to randomize between those possible things and then choose one. What's up, Arctic Raj? Howdy, welcome to the stream. I'm working on this day two of the story system. Okay, so now we're gonna, we're gonna, what we'll do is we'll loop over all the story nodes. We'll create a list of possible story node keys that we can, oh, story nodes is a vector though. Yeah, I guess we could just copy the story node. No, no, no. Uh, I guess we do need the story node. Oh, man. How about story node pointer? Yeah, there we go. So this will be possible, right? So it's going to store all the possible nodes. Yes. <laughs> uh. 
This hype one's pretty cool too. All right, so after just matched everything, it'll push it back as a possible. So possible dot push back. This node. Now, um, choose a possible story node. So if possible dot size is greater than zero, we're gonna do choose one at random. I thought I had something to automatically choose one random element, something like that. Maybe it's kit random element. Oh yeah, random element, sweet. Thanks for following you guys. Uh, so kit random element uh, vector t's. This has to put a default t though, that's fine. So we'll put a default t of null pointer and we're, we're giving it the array possible. Default is null pointer. So auto. Later, man. So this is the node. If node is null pointer, well, if node is not equal to null pointer, we'll do this. So this is going to run dialog to start with. Oh, it doesn't like this. What's wrong with you? The Fearless Hyena. Cool name, man. Yeah, I do the art. I do the art and I also do the music. So I make my music in Ableton. I make all the art here in Photoshop. So I use a graphics tablet for making the art. And yeah, I do all my code here in Xcode. Uh, this is a cross-platform game. This game engine I'm using is Coco Studio X. Um, and I'm publishing it first to Windows, Mac, and Linux on Steam in Jan sometime between January and, and March. So what's the error we're getting here? No matching function call for random element. That's not true. It can't be true. Vector of t's. T re oh, t ref. What the hell? Why isn't this? All right, man. Good night, man. Later. And I could just, this is a vector of story node pointers. Do I have to dynamic, do I have to cast this? It can't be true. Oh my God. That works. Wow. Well, all right. Well, I'll take it. I'll take it. So this should return a random node if we have multiple possible nodes. So theoretically, it should randomly choose at runtime which waterfall dialogue to play. Let's test that theory out. Each time we run the game here, it should do a different one. Well, not necessarily a different one, but it has the possibility to do a different one. All right, cool, it did that one. Nice, and now it's not doing the waterfall one. Cool. 
All right, this is the beginnings of a story system. Oh, procedural story, procedural dialogue. They can choose at, at runtime based on items and things you've already done. This is super rad. Okay, so now that I run it again, let's see what which dialogue it does this time. Okay, this time I did that one again. Oh, you know what? The DRAND is always going to be in the same state, so it's probably going to choose based on... Yeah, it's going to choose that one pretty much every time. Let's, uh... Here, I'll log out when it does this. There, I'm gonna log a number, random number between zero and a thousand every time it does this. So we can, I'm gonna run this a few times and it should technically return it the exact same thing every time. Unless, yeah, no, it does set the DRAND index every time it goes to a new area and there's no enemy, wait, there's water hoppers. There's water hoppers on this screen which technically should be using random numbers. And so depending on how long I wait before I get up there, it should be a different random number. There we go. Okay, I played that one that time. Okay, so this time it chose a DRAND of 189. This time I'm going to run straight in. Okay, this time I did that one again. DRAN 599. Okay, so yeah, it wasn't... The whole thing is that there's only two different possible things, so it's pretty likely that it's going to be the same thing every time. Let's see what happens if I run straight in again, if it gives me 599 again. Nope. Yeah, it's giving me different random numbers every time. Okay, good to know, cool. All right, awesome. All right, I think it's time to start the, the, the whole um, the system for playing music and like this should be more flexible, right? Like uh, here in the story, we've got this one is supposed to play the music over world A and this one's supposed to launch some dialogue so that's going to be the next step. But this is a great point to check in. So I'm going to check in my code so far. Cool. Yes, I did. I changed from wave to MP3 for um, one reason is that the retro VGS is going to be a limited cartridge size. And secondly, once I, I figured out that on Windows I can use MP3 and on Mac I can use MP3, basically everywhere, Android I can use MP3, iOS I can use MP3, everywhere I can use MP3 or wave. So I might as well be using MP3s to save space because with WAV files, the game right now is about 300 megabytes. Without WAV files, the game's like 70 megabytes or something like that. So most of the data for this game is music already. So I need to keep that down. I need to keep it reasonable, as reasonable as possible. Is that, uh, is that disappointing or anything? Or is, are you all cool with that? I mean, I could possibly, if, if people are interested in the WAV files for the music, I could always release a separate 
uh, download for the WAV files. Okay, I'm gonna. I gotta go to the bathroom real quick. I'll be right back. Get a drink of water. Take a quick little break. Yeah. Oh yeah, it was totally huge. Or the wave. Oh, wave is huge. Yeah. 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 Definitely. Definitely. What's up, Wistaso? So? All right, you guys. I'll be right back, and we'll get to uh, making this work, so you can play music. Oh, oh, okay, cool. Yeah, yeah, I made that decision to go for MP3s. So, one sec. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Aug's a little better. In fact, if it was supported on more platforms, maybe it is. It might already be built into a Coco Studio X. I'm not sure. Ah, huh? That's a that's an interesting interesting thought. Huh. I could also write my own if I really wanted to. What's up, Ladder Thief? Um, Ladder Thief, welcome to the stream. Let me show you what just got done and I'll um and then we'll start the next thing. So there's two bits of dialogue that can possibly run when you're next to a waterfall. So here's we'll run the game and it should it'll do one of them at random. So, and then next I'm working on a system which will be able to do different types of actions in the story too, like it could play music, or it could do dialogue, or it could trigger a flux. 
you know, which is a transition type thing or, you know, kind of animations, whatever. Okay, this time he's doing that one. Right? And so he only does one. And then if I run it again, he'll do so he should he has a chance to do something different. Yeah. I wonder how time consuming that would be. I mean, I guess it, gosh, I'm always such an idealist when it comes to time, right? I'm like, oh, I could do that in a day, and then it takes a week. Okay, so that time he did the same one, but it's because there's only there's a chance of only doing one or the other, so it's fifty percent chance. Lord of nothing, yes, yeah, I made this all myself, man. This is day two hundred and seven, making this video game. I've been making, I've been live streaming and YouTubing the every one of these videos since day one. So if you want to look at the info for this stream. You can go back all the way to day one and see when I just had a brown screen. There was nothing there, and I make all the art. I make all. I make all my art in Photoshop. I make all the music in Ableton, and I do all my code here in Xcode. And it's going to be coming out on Steam um, in January, sometime between January and March for Windows, Mac, and Linux. Yeah, and if you're interested in the game, if you like the game too, you can follow it at Songbringer.com. And you can also pre-order it there, and you get your name in the credits. So um, everybody that pre it's pre-ordered the game can get their name in the credits, basically on the main menu. So it's, it thanks everyone and the backers and all that. So uh, yeah, I did increase it a lot since I since, but that's not since last night. Last night I released a, a tweet, um, and I haven't changed it since then. So, yeah, there's, it kind of, it does, it goes random too. If you look at each word, each word has a random chance to either slow down or speed up. And then it keeps the so overall state of that. So, it kind of gives the words cadence. And same thing with Jib's letters. All of Jib's talking has cadence. So, let's see that again. You can kind of get, you, each time it runs, it has a different cadence and a different feeling because it's a random chance every word or every letter that it changes its timing. So it's just another human element. Yeah, that's a good way to put it. Oh my gosh, I never thought about the other side of that coin. That, that most programmers underestimate what they can do in a year. It's true. So true. Wow. Okay, so I'm gonna do I'm gonna do one more thing today, and that's to get the different types of actions started. So um, if I can get this music to start playing, then that will be it for today's video. So um, back in the story system. We need to be able to track different types of actions or parse parse the different types of actions and then yeah so we'll parse the actions now oh no this is um music Stir dot size is greater than zero. Then yeah, we just push back a music action. So actions dot push back. Wait, that's not that can't just be string. That needs to be a map of vector of maps. No? No, just a map. String string actions. The flow seems a little off to you, huh? What what, did, what does it need? Does it need to be less cadence, more cadence? Does it need quicker overall time, less time? What do you think? Uh, Devil Robot, I haven't recorded any live instruments yet, but I do plan to record my guitar. I've had this issue with tendonitis for a long time. 
it's almost gone. So I should be able to start playing my guitars again. And I have a, a suitcase drum set. It's actually in the corner. I'm not sure if you can see it, but it's right there. It's this orange suitcase, which I play, um, which I might record too. I don't know. But so far, it's all been digital because, you know, it's an electronic game. And I want, it, I want it to feel a little bit 8-bit, but sort of a little bit like today's music as well. So it'll be a blend of both digital instruments and regular analog instruments. I tried putting in voices, but it just didn't work. So actions, music equals, oh man, maybe this should be a, a vector of pairs. On stream? Yes, I, I will make music on stream that's even live. Um, all the music I've made for this game has been live. I did a couple videos. If you search through my YouTube archives, I got two videos on making music because I only have two songs so far, but yeah. Ah, so you want faster words overall. Okay, I'll keep that in mind. I'm going to take another look at the dialogue tonight, so I'll go and um, I'll keep that in mind when I'm when I'm doing my refinements. Actions, music, ah, should this be, should this be a map? If I limit this to a map, then there can be only be one music played per, and there can be only be one dialogue per, and there can only be one flux per, so no, I don't want this to be a map. This needs to be a vector of pair. Vector, pair, string, string. Oh, from yeah, that's a good idea, right? Small sounds. Yeah. I've, um... Yeah, I might do that. It helps to give music a nice, warm, human element when you do things like that, so yeah. I'm actually really excited to crack out my electric guitar, my bass guitar, and my acoustic guitar. Those are my, my guitars. I love all guitars. They're so great. So music. I guess it's just stir. Because the key is music, stir. Actions are pushed back. Oh, we need to create a pair. Pair. Is it make pair? Yeah, it's make pair. Interesting. Wow. Yeah, it wouldn't be cross-platform, but it it would it might be a start as to kind of exploring whether that would be a a viable thing or not. Cause so I do I do agree, MIDI is pretty cool. It's pretty amazing how you can you can do some sweet stuff with just MIDI, with depending on your sound bank and all that. Okay, so there it's got a parse action for music. Let's um, parse out dialogue. Actually, we can just ignore dialogue. If it doesn't have another action, dialogue is inferred. Yeah. Okay, so let's see if this works. So we've got possible actions to run. Um, you know what? I guess we should put this into the data anyways. If it doesn't have dialogue, then it should push it back. So we're gonna grab dialogue that gets there. If start outside is greater than zero. Hmm. 
No, okay, we don't need to, we don't need to parse it that way. We just need to do this. Um, if we've gotten to this point, so if actions dot si dot size is less than or equal to zero, then push back. Dialog Yeah, so that'll be that'll be explicit. So we don't need to actually grab Oh, I guess we could Oh yeah, okay, maybe this should be a thing where we go. So dialogue could possibly have you could have multiple dialogue actions. In fact, oh we should push back the key for this thing. So that thing's key will be the dialogues entry by default. And this thing will be stir. So there, we could have we could have multiple dialogue entries per. Okay. So now the story system, when it runs actions, it's going to have to run all the actions for that node. So for auto. pair in node actions and then afterwards it does this all right so this is if it's dialogue And I'll eventually have to turn this into um, integers, so I'll, I'll I'll do that eventually. But for now, working as a string system isn't so bad. Uh, we don't need to do this whole thing. T is greater than zero. This is to be timer plus equals all that, and then the this dialog key can always run. Hey, what's up, Mars Power? Yo. Oh, sorry, man. I'm just about to be finished with today's stream, but um, you'll get to see a little bit here. Welcome to the stream, though, man. Ciao, ciao. Ciao, bello. Okay, so otherwise, if it's... You know, this would be nodes or a pair... Pair dot second, so I can run different dialogue entities. Yeah. Um, if else, if it's music, we don't need to modify timer. We just need to play music. So, kid, play music. Oh yeah. Is that how they say it, or do I sound like that? Here on second, I believe is all we need. But damn. Okay, so if this works, then we should have. Um, first of all, let's make sure that these parse correctly. You know, verify the basics so you don't get all. You don't get all topsy turvy with your code. You don't have to debug as much if you just debug a little at first. You realize, okay, this got 
parse correctly, for example. The basics, you gotta check the basics. Check the things that you would normally assume. Um, okay, so if, let's see. We want to look at story nodes and we want to make sure that it's parsing all its actions correctly. So the first story node has one action. It should be to play music over world A in .mp3. Perfect. The next one should have a dialogue action called waterfall one. And let's go, let's stop this. Let's go infer the dialogue for this second one and make sure that that inferred dialogue works. Yeah, it's a, it's a C++ 14 string literal. So it, it automatically creates a string for you in, with the compiler instead of, um, instead of having to cr construct one with the C string. A uh, robot named Twitch, I'm just about to do that, man. One second. All right, so let's let's verify that second story node has its actions correctly. Yep, yep. String literal. Look, just if you want, if you're interested in it, look up uh, C plus plus fourteen string literals. There's more info on it. Story node one came out with dialogue waterfall one. Yes. Story node two came out with dialogue waterfall two. Perfect. Okay, so we're ready to try this out. Let's see if these actions run correctly. Okay, so we got, we're in this area. All right, cool, it's running the action for that dialogue. But so far it hasn't played the music. Hmm. Well, okay, let's figure out why I didn't play that music. Yeah, thank you, Turticus. Thanks for sharing that link. Okay, um, well, let's see what happened with the... Let's see if it maybe actually it got to here. And it just didn't play it because of it didn't have the assets in it. Oh, yeah, you know what? That needs the word sound. Oh, whoops, kit string with format. Paired on second dot C, sir. And we might as well throw in assets just to make it so it doesn't have to add it later. And now we can probably turn that off and we should be able to hear the music now on the ver when we first get in the game. Because it should trigger it because we haven't, we're on the Z equals zero and we're, we have the sword. So it should play this music. Oh, I don't, I don't need this breakpoint. Yeah, it worked. Awesome. Wait a minute, did it stop the music? I could have sworn I heard it playing. What's up, Niceros? Yeah, a uh, robot named Twitch. Okay, let's figure out what happened here. Set a breakpoint there. We don't need this breakpoint. 
Yeah, cool. It's triggering this right there. Let's step into this method here. File name, assets, sounds, overworld A, dot mp3. Good question. Oh, really? You can? Oh, that's cool. I didn't know that. Awesome. Let me try that. Oh, sweet. Thanks, Mars of Power. That's a good one. I like that. Yeah, so it's definitely triggered playing that music. What, how does it trigger the playing the overworld music in the other sense? World, overworld A. Yeah, it does the same thing, it just goes kit. Oh, it has a set of flux, sent, amb, anti-ambience timer, that's right. Okay, well this is gonna be janky for a second here, but. Essentially, this is what needs to happen. He's to set an anti-ambience timer for now. The way my sound engine works now, it has to, it plays ambience using the music. So it will overwrite the music if I go to another area and it triggers a new ambience. So if I set this, it'll it won't play the ambiences for a little while. <laughs> it does. Yeah, cool. I knew about the clicking on it. But I didn't know you could drag it. Learn something new every day. All right, so this is probably gonna be the last time I run the game because um, I gotta get going, gotta do my man stuff. I'm making a, a new canvas today. I'm gonna hang some stuff on the walls and stuff like that today. All right, we got music. All right, dude, celebration. It's looking so good, how this working. So the, the music can work, and I can actually play music from the story system now. That's right, it does. I learned some interesting stuff about crowd dynamics and chaos theory today by watching this thing on Netflix called The Code. But it's, it's talking about similar stuff. Oh my gosh, I just realized the, the dirt color. Hold on a second. Uh, what's that called? Oh. Knockback, dust needs to be dirt color of area oh psychedelic mode ah! All right, yeah. So, um, yeah. See you guys. That's it for today's video. I'll be back, um, back tomorrow. Same wizard time, same wizard place. So, um, thanks again for watching, everybody. It was fun, and we'll see you tomorrow.